Hello, this is Dr. Jackie Zhang. Um, I would like to discuss um, the IQ test results today. Uh, I do IQ tests on a regular basis. That's part of um, uh, the psychological evaluation I'm doing in the office. I usually use IQ test for learning disorder, ADHD evaluation, parenting capacity evaluation, child custody evaluation. In some cases, I don't do IQ test for all the child custody evaluation, just one. Uh, the cognitive functioning of a parent is in question. Now I do uh, some cognitive screening there. Uh, I also do uh, use IQ tests sometimes with the fitness for duty test as well. Uh, uh, in general, I have um, initial session and then testing session and result session. In the result session, uh, I would discuss uh, the IQ test results uh, index by index with the client, sometimes with the client's parents if it's minor. So we're going to talk about each index today. Let me see if I can share the screen here. All right. Okay, this is the normal curve for uh, uh, a person's IQ, t uh, IQ results or IQ scores. And if anything between 90 to 110, that's the average, 50% of the population belong to average. 110 to 120 is above average, 120 to 130. Uh, is a superior and 130 and above is a very superior. That's a top 2%. That's a, the MESA level. Uh, 80 to 90 is below average and 70, 80 borderline. Borderline means right between average and uh, intellectual disability. Anything around 70 and below, uh, that's um, lower 2%. Here, the score somewhere here will be considered as intellectual disability um, mild. Anything around 50 would uh, be considered as moderate. Anything around 30 would be considered as a severe. So uh, with uh, people uh, with the IQ around 70, uh, mild intellectual disability, the highest functioning level would roughly be uh, fifth, sixth grader. Um, they can be you know, 50 years old, they can uh, study um, with a tutoring, uh, they can have an IEP. In general, their functioning level is roughly around there, unfortunately. Uh, and IQ is a largely genetically related. So uh, there are uh, several cases up to the Supreme Court discussing about, uh, you know, what's the, if there is any rehabilitation for individual or for parents with IQ score roughly around the 70. Um, uh, we're talking about right now the constitutional right as a parent and an individual uh, versus the potential of a child abuse. You know, you're talking about a fifth grader taking care of an infant. Um, they, 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 they don't know how to balance the medications, solid food, not solid food, temperature, uh, those functioning levels. So it's recommended to have some type of supervision, some type. They can still live independently with uh, individual with this IQ around a 70, um, but when it comes to complex types of supervision, and when IQ is around the 50, uh, pretty much they can do some uh, uh, non-skilled type of work, but need daily super supervision, such as you know how to prepare meal and then take a bus, those type of things. Um, let's see. Okay, we're going to go to this standard score. There are four skills for adult IQ score. Okay, Okay. there are four skills. When it talks about IQ, we're talking about uh, the verbal functioning, which is verbal comprehension, and the perceptual reasoning, which is also called, considered as uh, hands-on IQ. Uh, it's abstract thinking ability. Working memory. Uh, this is about um, um, retention, you're re retaining information in a short period of time, how much information you retain. The subtest underneath is digit span, you know, um, six, zero, randomly, six, zero, five, eight, two, nine, you know, repeat back. Those are digit span. Uh, average adult digit span uh, is seven digits, that which is our phone number. So uh, in general, people can memorize in a short period of time 
uh, the uh, a phone number, seven digits, and then backwards. Processing speed, that's how, that's not the in-depth of information, that's how, uh, how fast a person processing simple informations. Um, so due to uh, the mental different uh, cognitive functioning levels and uh, how our brains are wired, uh, people have uh, zigzagging, you know, uh, some discrepancies among their indexes, the results. I'm just using this as an example right now. Um, so this is not a common uh, profile in general, what I relate, you know, I can't use my, my regular client's profile, so I just uh, pick one uh, that is not my client. So um, I'm going to read it up, did a good job. So I would just, let's see, the verbal comprehension, verbal IQ relates to a person's verbal, app, uh, verbal reasoning skills, a fun of knowledge, uh, how, how, much the, uh, how well the person can learn verbally. Um, the subjects were related to um, language arts, English, writing, uh, any type of uh, uh, task so that relates to verbal skills. You know, the, the job-wise, I always tell people the career, career selection, if you have a huge verbal IQ here, you know, the, again, uh, the average is, uh, is 90 to, to 110. Um, so the, if you have a huge verbal IQ, obviously here you have a huge, huge verbal IQ here is above 99 percentile. So the, you know, the, for the job, you could do public speaker, public defender, um, um, salesman, you could be a writer, you could be uh, any type of job, utilize a lot of verbal skills. Okay, obviously in this profile, this person has 138. Um, it's in the uh, very superior area, uh, the range. It's above 99 percentile of a general population, which means give me a hundred um, female her age at this point. This compared to her age age range, uh, she will score uh, above 99 percent of them. So, which is a top one percent. So, next time I give her similar uh, verbal tasks, uh, 95 out of 100 times that she will score somewhere in a range. So, IQ score is in a range depending on. How the person feel that day you know they're sick or you're not having headaches you know uh you didn't sleep well last night so the, the iq score does fluctuate a little bit not extremely from this end to the other hand but fluctuate a little bit in a range so here is the verbal iq perceptual reasoning iq this is a so-called hands-on iq in the old terms the hands-on iq it's a, a person's abstract thinking fluid reasoning uh it's more like a pattern finding problem solving um uh, use any type of analytical thinking. For example, for example, uh, the subjects will be math, geometry, algebra, any problem solving classes or courses or or home ec, you know, making something, uh, do it yourself projects, uh, computer science, uh, um, programming, you know, job related will be uh, engineering, use that a lot, um, interior design. Uh, computer program, computer science, math, you know, algebra, geometry, those things all you utilize a person's perceptual reasoning. And I'll explain them how to uh, mingle everything together. So it's not, when you do something, it's not just one uh, index there. Um, so in this case, this person is 129, above 97 uh, percentile in the superior range. So next time I give, give her some something similar, she will be scoring uh, somewhere between 121 to 134. The next one is a f uh, working memory. Working memory measures how uh, how much information a person can retain in a short period of time. And I give an example about the, the phone number, you know, the digit span. Um, usually, individuals with ADHD suffers on this index. You know, that's why they're easily distracted. That's why uh, they don't retain information. You tell them multiple things. They only remember the first one. They don't remember the last one. They can't multitask. This is, does measure multitask. You know, I had a conference about uh, the fitness for duty uh, evaluation just recently about um, uh, actually expert evaluating uh, cops, you know, different type of jobs. He does use IQ sometimes from time to time and the working memory he prefer is a is a working memory above 85, which is above one standard deviation. Uh, uh, so working memory is about retaining information and uh, individuals suffer from uh, some type of attention deficits. 
um, or sometimes it could be just simply, you know, having some depression, then you don't retain information because you're kind of, you know, distracted or anxiety disorder could uh, affect this uh, uh, working memory. So in this case, the working memory standard score 128. Again, this is compared to her age group, this client's age group above the 97 percentile, uh, a range 120, 133 and a superior range. So next one is processing speed. Processing speed is, uh, is about how fast you're processing simple, simple information and a dual uh, uh, fine visual motor type of task. Because for example, you know, copy something, set a table. You know, it doesn't have to come, uh, this just simply is about a visual motor speed, you know, and a processing in your, in your, your brain, you know. Uh, if you want to be a good a streamline worker, you have to have a high, very high processing speed that makes you fast. You know, just do it, do it. You don't have to think, you just get things done. You know, people with the processes be fast, the process we usually get things done really quick. Unless, the, again, the test involved other stuff that uh, they're not uh, very good at. But if you just process the speed, you simply measure speed and how fast you process the simple information. So in this case, the person scored 150, very, very high, above 99.9%, so it's the top of zero one points, very, very fast. Uh, acting. Um, it's a range of 137, 150 being a very superior range. You don't see that score for the past uh, um, for the past 10 years, roughly. I've been doing uh, psychological testing for the past 10 years. I've been in this field for about 16 years. For the past 10 years, uh, I, I have seen 130, 129, 130 above probably less than, than 10 people. And I, I remember evaluating these people and um, it's rare to have uh, this type of score. And I do social security disability evaluation as well. A lot of people diagnosed with the intellectual disability. And then also, you know, I use IQ on them. And their IQ, if it has a diagnosis, usually is below 70, roughly, roughly around there. And these are the sub skills that under underneath each index. So I'm not going to detail about what each uh, test uh, subtest it is about. So in general, I just explain each score, uh, scale, the scale score to uh, clients and or clients' parents if it's a minor. This is a IQ, uh, adult IQ, so it's uh, it's for uh, individuals above uh, age 16 and above. Um, so the the, the uh, I might do a video for the uh, for, for the kids kids IQ WISC, which is for kids of 6 to 2, uh, uh, roughly to a 16 years old to 15. Uh, years, 11 months, and, and the, the, the fifth edition of WISC split the perceptual reasoning into um, two. One is abstract thinking, uh, uh, perceptual reasoning, the other one is uh, a visual uh, perceptual. One is um, a fluid reasoning, the other one is a visual perceptual. So they separate that. Um, but this one has only, you know, the fifth, fourth edition of adult IQ uh, in general, just put them together, considered. Let me see if I miss anything here. Um, that's roughly what the IQ score is um, is about. And um, um, here is a discrepancy. Uh, discrepancy in general, people have about a similar level of IQ among all the four indexes. Wave like this, you know, for people with uh, uh, ADHD, we should go this way to this way. But, uh, ADHD, they will have a verbal like this, a perceptual hands-on like this, and dip working memory and dip processing speed. The two last last um, indexes are what they suffer in general, in general. Um, so you can kind of see their pattern, um, you know, and the, the psychostimulants, the aerial and bivans, uh, all the psychostimulants, they don't touch the first the two, two sub skills. They don't, touch, they don't make you a larger vocabulary, a more talkative person. They don't um, make you a uh, analytical thinker more so than you normally but it does you know it does jack up your working memory it does jack up your processing speed so that's what the uh, psychostimulants uh, do psychostimulants uh, medications do uh, for a person so in, in, because of ADHD individuals like you know their profiles like this so they jack up at the last two ones so, so they kind of come uh, functioning at an ideal level um, so that's what suckers and movements. And in, the, in general, uh, people with autism tends to, uh, um, you know, in the past, they call it Asperger's. You don't have Asperger's diagnosis anymore. It's an autistic 
a spectrum disorder, uh, you are somewhere on the spectrum, uh, mild, moderate, and a severe. So people with a depression tend to have a suffer from lower processing speed. Uh, people with uh, some autistic traits tend to suffer from uh, uh, some some process lowers process to be again. This is just a profiling. It's not okay if you're ADHD. You definitely have these two lower. You know, it kind of give you idea uh, where the scores might be, the patterns will be. Uh, but in gen you know, I would not diagnose somebody just ADHD because they have two lower sub skill. You know, sub skills, uh, working memory and processing speed. Okay, and uh, learning disorder. If you have a verbal uh, index significantly higher than your hands-on. That's called uh, uh, nonverbal learning disorder, which means that you learn the best. You want everything to spit it out. Everything is verbalized to you. When it comes to parenting, you know, for kids that have nonverbal learning disorder, which means that they learn the best, uh, function the best when the tasks um, are given to them in a verbal uh, fashion. So you want to discipline them verbally. Uh, you want to uh, utilize that, that is strength, you know, you want to teach them verbally, you know, I, I talk to you step one, step two, step four, and uh, I'm going to tell you the reason why you shouldn't be doing that, uh, number one, number two, number three, number four. Okay, this is how to uh, uh, interact with a person that with nonverbal learning disorder. Again, if you have a low, significant low, not just you know, it's statistically significantly low uh, verbal comprehension and significantly higher um, perceptual reasoning uh, score, which which may uh, may qualify for a diagnosis of uh, uh, verbal learning disorder or language based learning disorder. Uh, the DSM doesn't do those no more learning disorder, uh, language based their learning disorder, non verbal learning disorder, verbal learning. They don't do that no more. But I'm just saying that formally it will be the be related to this type of disorder. So with those people that have a huge hands-on IQ and the low verbals and have a verbal learning disorder, you want to do it uh, as you show them uh, the best of learning through seeing and then copying, seeing and doing. So you know, when you come to the parenting, uh, you want to make your lecture short and sweet, and you don't want to go on and on and explaining uh, one, two, three, four. You just want to be brief, and you want to show them that well. The next time you do it, you should do this, this. this look at me, this, and then you do it. Okay, those people learn by observing, learn by seeing, not by listening, uh, and the languages part. Um, uh, I already said about, you know, what they would be good at when it comes subjects. So uh, these would be uh, the, some of the information I will look uh, to find some type of a learning uh, disorder. Uh, dyslexia, I will look, do it differently. Um, uh, evaluation. So, uh, so that's about it. How, you know, I normally would explain the test results to parents and clients. So I think I... I need to make a video just so I include all the information necessary um, uh, in this video so par par uh, parents or clients can come back and revisit every now and then. Um, sometimes I will explain the subtest. You know, every now and then there will be a significant discrepancies among two subtests uh, for some reason. And then that I will have to look into that to why one subtest, for example, is only. Um, eight or something and the other one is 13 15 you know what what does that mean so those are data needs to be interpreted so that's the the iq test and this is the typical report that i would write um i let megan wrote this up and she did a good job and she wrote up a, a, a whisk the the kids version as well uh, so I will probably do that in another video and if you have questions just uh, either give me a call or leave message so I will try my best to, to answer the questions. Thank you very much and have a good day.